The first woman to become a self-made millionaire in the United States had a rough road from rags to riches. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring Villa Luero in Irvington, New York. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. After Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, Sarah Breedlove was the first free person to be born in her family. Her parents had labored as slaves near Delta, Louisiana, and when they were freed, they did not even have a penny to their names. Sarah got a rough start to life, which became even worse as she began to grow up. First, her mother died when she was only six years old. Then her father passed away the following year. By the age of seven, she was an orphan. Three years later, her sister and brother-in-law, living in Vicksburg, Mississippi, took her in. She worked full-time as a domestic servant, saving up for the day she could move out. After four years of enduring abuse from her brother-in-law, she married her first husband at the age of 14 years old. He was much older than her and had passed away by the time she was 20 after having a child with him. Now with a toddler to take care of, Sarah knew she had to make more money, but there just was not much opportunity in Mississippi. She heard that she had a couple of brothers in St. Louis who were barbers by trade, so she decided to reach out to them, hoping that there was more opportunity there and she would not be disappointed. Upon arriving to St. Louis, Sarah was given a job at a laundromat, making $1 per day, or the modern-day equivalent of about $31.24 per day, which was more than she had ever made, but still hardly enough to feed her baby. But then something happened. Her hair began to fall out. Working around the harsh chemicals was taking its toll on her scalp, so she asked her barber brothers what to do to keep her hair. They began taking care of her hair and teaching her about various cosmetics. Learning about beauty interested her so much that she applied to be a saleswoman for beauty products at the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, and she got the job. She was instantly successful, surpassing her sales quotas and acquiring new customers. Her charisma drew an advertiser by the name of Charles Walker to her, and in no time, the two were married. They schemed up a plan to take the world by storm together. With her knowledge of beauty products and his success in marketing, they rebranded Sarah as Madam C.J. Walker and began selling their own beauty products across the country. They traveled by train, city to city, doing live demonstrations of their products and enlisting women as sales agents. Now operating in every major city, the money started to roll in. Against all odds, Sarah had become the first self-made female millionaire in the history of the United States. With the money she made, she purchased a townhouse in New York City's Harlem and began planning a proper vacation house. She wanted to have a big impact in her community and inspire others to achieve their dreams. She hired New York's first registered African-American architect, Vertner Woodson Tandy, to design for her the 20,000 square foot estate which would be named Villa Luero after her daughter. The palatial estate was planned to boast symmetrical sections with large stone columns composing grand porticos. Perfectly manicured gardens stretched from elaborate terraces ornamented with stone balustrade and potted tropical plants. When the house was finished, she invited her employees to celebrate with her by hosting a ball with food prepared by chefs on the tables and live music ringing through the halls. The interior was every bit as spectacular as the exterior, with custom-designed furniture decorating the stair hall. Each archway had been carved from stone and set below a gilded coffered ceiling. The music room was finished out with painted wood panels separated by gilded pilasters with rounded windows and built-ins set in intervals on the walls. In the center of the room, suspended from the ceiling, was an electric crystal chandelier glittering amongst gold accents. Music was very important in this house, with not only a grand piano elegantly placed in front of the window, but an SC pipe organ at the opposite end of this grand room. The dining room boasted antique furniture, centered on French doors opening out to the terrace, and the barrel vaulted ceilings contained hand-stenciled images between its bowed beams. Unfortunately, Sarah did not enjoy her house for long. Just one year after its completion, her kidneys began to fail, and in 1919, she passed away. Her daughter inherited her company, with two-thirds of her wealth being donated to charities. Her daughter continued to live at Villa Luero until her death in 1931, when she donated the house to the NAACP. Unfortunately, following the Great Depression, the NAACP was not able to afford its upkeep, so the organization made the tough decision to sell the home. 
The house went on to be used by the Companions of the Forest in America before gaining its National Historic Landmark status in 1976. In 1993, Harold Dooley purchased Villa Luero and began extensive restoration work to restore the house to its original condition. Upon completion of the restoration work in 2014, the house was named a national treasure by the U.S. National Trust for Historic Preservation. Ideas were tossed around about opening the house as a house museum. However, Harold Dooley eventually ended up selling the villa to the New Voices Foundation, who use it as Sarah had originally intended, as a think tank for African American women to collaborate on their entrepreneurial endeavors. Villa Luero survives to this day, a stunning example of Gilded Age architecture and a testament to the legacy of Madam C.J. Walker. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I would also like to say a special thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen and show your support for the production of these videos, join our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.